Good morning, family. This is your main man and your best friend, Johnny Cash, a.k.a. Johnny Crypto. And we are live. All right, so it's about uh, 2.36 in the morning in the Windy City in Chicago. And I have something on my mind I'd like to share with everybody. So I'm looking at an article online, and um, it was written by a Bailey Rutso. And uh, Miss Rutso titles her article. Pay Think, Kim Kardashian's Lessons for the Bitcoin Card Industry. Now, it was published on November 14th, 2014. And... um, Okay, Du Mazil, thank you for chiming in with us. It starts off by saying Kim Kardashian may be an overexposed uh, reality star, but she's also a tech entrepreneur with a short-lived past in the payments industry. And several companies in the Bitcoin space are repeating her biggest mistake by offering a plastic payment card. Okay, so let's talk about that first paragraph for a moment. Now, first of all, Miss Miss, uh, Rutzel is taking a jab at uh, Kim K by referring to her as an overexposed reality star. Now, she hi- hyperlinked the word overexposed, right? So you click on the word and it goes to another page where photographs of Kim Kardashian scantily clad appear. Now, she also provides a similar hyperlink when she uses the language tech entrepreneur. And guess what happens when you click on that? Not a damn thing. It goes to a page, a blank page. The link is broken. Hmm. How convenient. Okay, so... This alerts me to the fact that, first of all, Miss uh, Rutzel is hating on Kim Kardashian, and therefore her judgment is suspect, right? She hates on her on one hand, then slings her a left-hand compliment by calling her a tech entrepreneur with a short-lived past in the payments industry. Yeah. Okay. Clearly, Bailey is um, shooting for a Pulitzer Prize, but uh, Miss Rutzel, I don't see that in your future. (laughs) Okay, so in the second sentence of the first paragraph, she goes on to say, and I repeat, and several companies in the Bitcoin space are repeating her biggest mistake by offering a plastic payment card. Okay. All right. All right. And it goes on. It goes on. I'm not going to read all of it. I'm just going to read pertinent parts, highlighting, highlighting a couple of um, relevant sections and uh, providing commentary there too as the occasion requires. Okay, so next paragraph, she says that uh, four years ago, Kardashian tried to diversify her product set 
by endorsing the Kardashian card, spelled with a K, a luxury prepaid card that asked users to pay up to a year's worth of otherwise standard monthly fees up front. The steep cost of entry was meant to keep customers using their prepaid card. During this time, prepaid products were widely considered disposable. Okay, I can feel that, you know. And I can see, I can see the problem there. You know, even even today when a person purchases one of those prepaid cards, their objective is not to hold on to them for the long haul because they're prepaid, okay? And so, you know, I can appreciate how in 2014 the same state of affairs um, existed. And so a person buys a car, they're not buying it to be loyal to a damn car. They're buying it for privacy and security purposes. Okay, uh, let me see who's chiming in with this. Um, okay, all right. So, um, it goes on. The card failed pretty miserably. Just 12 days after the product launched, it was pulled from the market amid criticism of its fees and lack of consumer pro protections. Plus, many reacted harshly to the thought of Kardashian being a financial role model for teens and young adults. Only 16 were sold. Damn. <laughs> what did, uh, what did my man, uh, Magic Johnson say in um, Remember the Time, damn, that was cold. Yeah. Okay, then she goes on and says uh, several Bitcoin, Bitcoin rather, Bitcoin startups are following the same path Kardashian did years ago. They see a plastic card, either prepaid or debit, as a potential breakthrough that can make Bitcoin mainstream, and ensure a long-term relationship with users. But the Bitcoin card, just like the Kardashian card, will suffer from a fatal lack of consumer demand. Okay, so now, Miss um, Bailey wants to put on the slippers of Nostradamus and um, <laughs> walk a mile in his shoes. Well, What's interesting is that, well, you know what? Before I go there, there was something else that was interesting to me in this article. And let me, um, let me put the spotlight on it. Oh, here we go. All right. So, um, Bailey went on to say, um, a couple of more paragraphs uh, down that the Kardashian card failed because not only now she wrote a crazy ass sentence here. The Kardashian card failed because not only because Kardashian and financial wherewithal didn't jail, but mainly because it misjudged the market. Now that has got to be the one sentence 
with the most becauses that I have ever read in my life. I mean, because, 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 I mean, damn girl, I mean, come on now. What's with all those becauses? All right, so, in a nutshell, the Kardashian card failed not only because, let me fix it up for this girl, help her out. Not only because Kardashian and her financial wherewithal didn't jail, but mainly because it misjudged the market. Well, Miss Bailey, you misjudge Bitcoin. Yeah, that's right. And she goes on to um, comment on a couple of Bitcoin industry card toters who failed, and that's fine. But it doesn't follow from the fact that a few Bitcoin, Bitcoin card industry players were unsuccessful in 2014, that that gives you the license to bring a sweeping indictment against the entire Bitcoin card industry. Okay? Because if she had a crystal ball like she pretended to have in 2014, she would have known, first of all, the track record of Bitcoin since its launch in 2008. Right? And um, there was a time during its early genesis that Bitcoin was at $20. Yes. And by the date in question, i.e. November 14th, 2014, Bitcoin was at $394. All right, so that is something that Bailey should have been mindful of before levying such <laughs> an indictment against the Bitcoin card industry. She should have checked herself before she wrecked herself. But she didn't. So, we will let her stupidity give her justice today. Now, on this day, August 31st, 2017, Bitcoin is right at $4,703. 
Now, from $394 on November 14th, 2014 to $4,703 on August 31st, 2017, that is a 1,093% increase in value. And you, Miss Bailey Russo, are going to have the audacity to frame your mouth and suggest that there exists a corresponding relationship between Kim Kardashian and Bitcoin. Bitch, please. It is just the opposite. And to all you teenagers, all my teenagers out there, let this be a lesson to you to take your eyes off of these falling stars. No one in Hollywood is worthy of being your role model. Watch this new currency. Watch the crypto currency. Follow that star because it is a millennial invention and it is more in tune with your nature and your character, you would be wiser to focus on the movement of the cryptocurrencies. At last count, there were 900 currencies in the world. Now, this is powerful, people. This is very powerful now because, um, let's see here. All right. Okay, so this is powerful because if you were to count the number of countries that are members of the UN, you will get the number of Last time I checked, it was 393 or thereabouts. And you know what makes a country a country? Do you know what gives a country its status as a sovereign? Exactly. Its currency. Right? Okay, so watch this now. I'm about to show you power. Every country is known by its currency. Okay. And a country that has no currency is uh, not a sovereign. All right. So.
in the crypto community, you have a united crypto nations of sovereigns. 900 at last count. They all have their currencies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now it's very interesting because um, you are not able to knock on the White House of the sovereign behind Bitcoin or the palace behind the sovereign of one of the other alt coins or digital currencies. And why is that? Because they are wreaking havoc within the international banking community. And you connect the dots. So these currencies are very powerful because they are based on an infrastructure that is so mathematically precise that no hacker alive can penetrate and compromise the integrity of this infrastructure unlike your government. Mm -hmm. So any currency that is circulating in the private crypto community is absolutely a force to be reckoned with. And it is more than adequate to meet any youth's requirement for a role model. Yes. If you're looking for a role model, Follow the mathematics of the encrypted crypto community. Yes. Yes. So, what's very interesting. and very telling about Miss Rutzel's treatment of this uh, subject matter is that by throwing the baby out with the bathwater in bringing a sweeping indictment against all Bitcoin card um, players. 
she revealed her ignorance vis-a-vis the nature of our crypto community. Let me uh, let me zero in on exactly what I mean when I say that. Okay. All righty. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Let me see if that's it. Okay, here we go. Yeah, this is it right here. Her last sentence. Okay. She says, these Bitcoin companies are also mistaking the market as one that needs traditional payment instruments to garner widespread adoption instead of cleaning up web and mobile functionality, which is Bitcoin's real means of disruption. Okay. Now, she doesn't understand the history of money. Okay. And she surely does not understand the history of banking. Because if she did, she would know the Knights Templar connection in the history of money and the history of banking. And by extension, international banking. <clears throat> Now, on my grandfather's side, of my mother, my bloodline is connected with Knights Templar, who were founded by Moors in France. Now, so I am intimately connected with what I'm about to share with you. In the process of banking, as <clears throat> created by the Nice Templar, the systems of security that were incorporated in all transactions more so than not incorporated the communication of 
information and the protection of information. The layers of security that were incorporated in their protocols became more valuable <laughs> it's it's kind of funny but it's real it it it's very real became more valuable than the valuables. Now, why is that? Because these men were masters and not only that, they took their position of fiduciary responsibility very seriously. And were very honorable in the execution of their work. Now, I said that to say this. These cards as we have them as we have them today are not so much payment instruments as much as they are information instruments you see the card is not paying anything as much as it is conveying information from point A to point B that a certain value exists, right? And it is in the conveying or the transmission of the information to that effect that enables the recipient of that information to act as if there had been a transmission of payment. But in reality, one receives the transmission of the right of ownership of the value. So what I am saying in essence is this. Information is the commodity today. And all we are doing anymore in this age, this information age, is transmitting and receiving information. 
when the Knights Templar evolved banking. It evolved to that level even hundreds of years ago. Google everything you can find on the Knights Templar and their place in the historical origin of banking. Research that. Your efforts will be supremely rewarded, I assure you. All righty then. So, that is my rant on this morning concerning this article written by Miss Rutzel. <laughs> So, I'm going to sign off at this time. And before I do so, I'm going to ask everybody to follow my journey. Follow my journey. Subscribe to my YouTube page. Like this video. I have a ton. I have a ton of good stuff on my YouTube page will absolutely set you free. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Okay? Have all of your friends come and check me out and uh, subscribe to this channel. And As my main man, Don Cornelius, used to say, and you can bet your money, it's all going to be a stone gas, honey. This is your main man and your best friend, Johnny Cash, a.k.a. Johnny Crypto, signing off. I love you all, each and every one of you. Peace and love, baby. Ciao.